What's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to review my computer science resume that got me interviews with Amazon, Capital One, Box, and other top companies. So I'm sure you already know, but the resume is probably the, one of the most important things about the entire interview process because if your resume sucks, you're not even gonna make it to the interview or even like the coding assessment. Because even if you are the best programmer in the world, if your resume is trash, the company will just discard your resume and you're just gonna suffer and cry. By the end of this video, I hope you all can see what maybe a capable resume looks like. Uh, I'm not saying my resume is the best, obviously it definitely can do some work, but maybe you guys can get some insight, even if it's a little bit using my resume and as I go over my experiences, my projects, how I set up my resume, all the things that I've made sure to include to make sure I can land as many internships as possible. Now, in most cases, I'm pretty sure your recruiter isn't going to print out your resume. They're most likely gonna view on some type of online platform. So that's why it's perfectly fine to include links on the top of your resume. Like right here, I have a link to my uh, my LinkedIn. Then I have like my Gmail link. So if you click it, you automatically email me. And of course I included my phone number. And it's kind of surprising, but some recruiters will actually phone call you before they email you. And you know, if you're like me and you don't pick up calls that you don't see the number of, it's kind of like, I might miss that call. But still, hopefully the recruiter emails you. Otherwise, that would be crazy. Google just like calls you and you don't pick up so you don't get an internship. Now, the next section I include was education. And now, there's a big debate, right? Should you include experiences first and education later or should you include education first? I'm pretty sure once you're, once you're actually in the industry, like you're an actual full-time software engineer, it's really about your experiences. But since I'm still a student and I'm trying to get my first like real internship, that's why I put education up top. So I started off by including what college I attend, which is the University of Maryland College Park. Um, depending on the college you go to, some internships will be more lenient towards you and give you extra consideration because they might have a partnership with your school. Right under that, I included my degree, computer science, and also included my minor. Just because if you have other majors and minors that you're going for, be sure to include them, right? Show the recruiter that you're putting in the work in the educational field, that you're a hardworking student because they would like to see a hardworking student be a potential intern for their company. Then expect your graduation as well. And right under that, I included that I had a full ride scholarship as well as my GPA. The reason I included the full ride scholarship was because uh, having a full ride scholarship, one goes to show that you are, you know, definitely excelling as a student. And like I said, companies love to see that. And include your GPA. If your GPA is bad, it's better to include your GPA because if you don't, companies can assume that this person probably has like a, a 1.0 out of four. That's why they probably didn't include their GPA. No. No matter how bad your GPA is, please include it. And the most crucial part about my education section is the relevant coursework. Now, I put the relevant coursework for two reasons. One, it's good to show recruiters what courses you've taken so they can know what to expect. Like for example, most recruiters look for algorithms. If you haven't taken algorithms, then that can definitely hurt your uh, internship chances because it's one of the most important classes you would take as a computer science major. But the second main reason I included this uh, section is because of keywords. You see, your resume for some companies, for a lot of companies, is put into a resume parser. That resume parser scans your resume, looks for any keywords, and then assesses your resume based on that. If you don't pass a certain score, then your resume will get discarded, right? So having those keywords across your resume is very important. And by including relevant coursework, you're already including a bunch of computer science terms like algorithms, object-oriented programming, computer system, network security, linear algebra, statistics, all of that. Now my next section is technical skills. Um, this again helps with keywords and also recruiters probably want to know what language you're good at because depending on the company or what languages they use, they would want to hire you more or sometimes even less depending on what experience you have. So for my languages, I put Python, Java, C Sharp, and a bunch of other languages. Um, I did put OCaml, MATLAB, and Ruby, which I'm not too strong at. So like if a recruiter asked me, hey, I want you to uh, code this problem or this algorithm in like Ruby, I would probably cry or just like leave the interview right there because I would get toasted. But hey, I did create a project in Ruby, so I'm gonna include it. That's what you kinda gotta do. Like if you coded something in a language, just include it and just pray that they don't ask you about it. And then I also include my technology slash frameworks because with the emerging technologies that are coming up, uh, it's good to show that you're in tune with them and you're also in tune with other frameworks because it shows that you're a very versatile programmer. Like Chromium is a web driver. Pandas is a library that helps with um, data science. Like showing that versatility is a really good thing. And now we go to professional experience. And the way I order my professional experiences is from most recent to like most far back. I blurred out the first experience simply because I'm gonna talk about it last because this experience definitely helped me get a bunch of more hits when it came to internships, right? It got more interviews with it, etc. You have to understand, I have so many drafts in my resume 
But the moment I include this experience, all of a sudden I'm getting more hits. So the second experience I have is software contracting. So I was a full stack software engineer freelancer where you know I create automated programs for uh, clients and I did a lot of work with this. And you see right here, uh, I include a lot of key terms in my description like full stack, web automation, uh, the languages I use, the libraries that I use, and I try to use as many numbers as possible, okay? When you are you know, creating your resume, try to quantify your uh, contributions or your successes because that way companies actually understand how much you've helped or what you actually did. For example, my web automated program were very successful and they helped check out a lot of in-demand products and I included over $70,000 worth of in-demand products. So that right there to a recruiter, will, that will like definitely be like, whoa, like that's a lot of product that this guy has helped check out right um i completed over 23 client contracts like that's like showing that i understand how to communicate with others and not, not just a little bit but 23 people which is a lot of clients especially for a college student and one thing i do want to point out is i did include my title um again for keywords also because you'll see later on i'm also like a software engineer intern i'm a software engineer and co-founder i'm a freelancer so you kind of want to like really be descriptive about uh, what your job title is because again, it shows versatility and versatility is one of the best things you can show on your resume. The next experience, I go into my second ever software engineering internship. My first one, I actually didn't include because it was in 2019, the summer heading into college and I just felt that was way too far back. But this internship right here, I uh, used Java. You see right here, I included what language I use, what I did. Uh, I use a lot of action keywords, right? Start every bullet with a, with a verb. Don't do a noun or adjective, that doesn't make sense. Just do a verb. Um, again, I quantified as much as I could. When I said a Java-based indexing system that categorizes 150 plus company documents based on tags, you can boost file such speed by over 50%, right? You wanna quantify successes. Uh, the 50% might be a little arbitrary, and might have done some Trump stuff right there where I just put a percentage out, but it did help a lot, and I think 50% is a pretty accurate assessment of that. My next experience is quantum operations, where I was a software engineer and a co-founder. It's basically a, a software automation company I did co-found uh, the winter of my freshman year of college. And I'm still working with them today. You'll see 2020 in the present. Uh, again, develop a full stack app using MVVM design patterns. If you have design patterns on your resume, guys, that right there is a key word that a lot of resumes don't have. A lot of students aren't experienced with coding uh, projects in various design patterns. So impress your recruiter with you know, terms like that. Um, again, I use uh, uh, technical terms like HTTP request handling, multi-threading algorithms. I use numbers by saying it reduced network overloading issues by 96%. Uh, looking back at it, I didn't really use a lot of numbers for my quantum operations experience, but I think it's fine because I did, you know, describe exactly what I did. And what I did was very niche, right? Like the body inch coding a bot is very niche. It's a very niche thing to do. So because of that, I'm able to like talk about things that I'm sure a lot of other programs haven't done. Like for example, implementing a proxy rotation algorithm uh, using a variety of IPs, uh, parallel processing, HTTP traffic, um, yeah, so. I definitely think this experience was worth putting on because it shows that, you know, I'm not like the rest, hopefully. I'm sure there's some other crazy kids out there, but maybe my level of craziness just a little bit better. And now going back to my first, my most recent experience, like I said, this has helped me a lot and I've seen it on a lot of other YouTubers' resumes that, you know, I got jobs at Google, Amazon, Netflix, etc. And that is me being a teaching assistant at the Unity Department of Computer Science. Yes, I was a computer science TA for my CMSC 216 class, which is a class I took my freshman year of college. This, having this on my resume, I don't know why, I don't know if a company just like to see teaching assistant more, but this experience, all of a sudden, when I include this on my resume and send it to companies, I started getting much more replies back. It was like tremendous. The, the, the boost in replies were from here to here. I was like, whoa. The thing is, as a TA, you don't really code either. So it's kind of weird because it's not really an internship. You're not really creating a cool project. It's just you're helping others. And I think maybe that's why companies uh, like TAs because they like to see you know people can help others in the workplace. So I talked about how I led office hours for 590 students. 590 students is the amount of students in the entire course. Obviously, I didn't help 590 students, but you know, just, just put the numbers there because that's technically not a lie. Uh, I delivered instruction for um, a variety of topics, Linux, C, fundamental structures, learning diagrams, et cetera, et cetera. Again, I just listed out everything I possibly could because those keywords, right? I really wanna hit as many keywords as possible so my resume can pass the parsing test. The first project I included was a machine learning project, MBA Hall of Fame predictor. This was a project that was actually a group project for my data science class. Uh, it was really cool. I worked with two other people. We used uh, Python, uh, Beautiful Soup, uh, the request library, NumPy, 
And we basically developed a linear regression model with, and then I just talked about some machine learning terms. Uh, again, keywords, right? And I used as many numbers as I could. I talked about how accurate our model was to show that a 89% accuracy on a machine learning model is pretty accurate. So uh, having that included just showed that, you know, I know what I'm doing, my group knows what they're doing. Um, and yeah, I talked about how we uh, tested the model for uh, underfitting, overfitting. Again, this is all ML terms. I don't know if you guys understand machine learning if you're watching this video, but if you do, you know what I'm talking about. Even if you don't, um, the recruiters know what I'm talking about. So that's really all that matters. Uh, that's why I included these terms because I'm assuming the recruiter knows what machine learning is. And machine learning is probably the hottest thing about computer science right now. So the more machine learning you have on your resume, I strongly believe the higher the chance you will be able to land a software engineering internship. Like some of my friends, who got interviews with Google and actually landed the job with Google, Netflix, Amazon, they have resumes that have a bunch of machine learning all over them. Machine learning and medical stuff. It's like that combination just makes companies just freaking, I can't even say it on YouTube. A second project was Who's Face. This was also another school project actually, where I developed and trained a facial recognition algorithm on a bunch of images. And basically what the algorithm did was it takes, it has a data set of images if you give it an image, it will say which face it most closely matches to you. And this algorithm is used a lot for um, you know face facial scans when you enter like a company sometimes or your ID card. It's a really cool thing to code. Uh, again, it's machine learning, so that's why I included it on my uh, project list. And the thing is, I did a lot of front end development projects as well, but I didn't include them in the projects category because I was like, you know what, I should prioritize machine learning projects just simply because. Companies like them, right? Companies love to see machine learning, as I said prior. And while front end is cool and all, I feel like front end is much easier to pick up. And it's a skill that is more widespread in the computer science community, but not as many programmers are good in ML. So just having that on your resume just shows, again, that you have an edge over your other, your competition, right? Cause at the end of the day, you're competing against other computer science students to get the job. Then my final category is leadership slash extracurricular. This is a very small category. In fact, I literally just couldn't think of another good project to put on it that was ML. So I was like, you know what, let me just add this uh, leadership category. And plus, I was like, hey, what sets me apart from other uh, computer science students? I have a YouTube channel. So I talked about my other YouTube channel where I have like nearly 60,000 subscribers. And I talked about what I did. I do have computer science videos on there, so it shows that I'm making computer science content to teach others, right? Which also goes to my TA role. But basically just having that, I felt like separated me from a lot of other students. I've seen other YouTubers, tech YouTubers, not include being a YouTuber on the resume. So in the future, after my software engineering internship at Capital One, I'm not even gonna have space for that category, so I'm probably gonna take it out. This is my resume and I hope you all enjoy my resume and you guys learn some insight, learn about you know what to do uh, how to word your uh, your actions for every single experience. Make sure you use action words, make sure you use a bunch of keywords, include stuff like relevant coursework, include the dates, obviously make sure your resume is nice and neat. And I hope you guys took a lot from this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, more content coming like literally tomorrow. Thank you all for watching.